Have you guys had enough or are you thirsty for more? I'm John Young and we're going to discuss presents for this upcoming holiday season. All right, let's jump into some coffee liqueur. Coffee. It's been a late night. Mm. I do love a little maple syrup with my coffee. Best idea ever. Sounds like time for presents. When making coffee liqueur, it's best to work with a local company. They care about the coffee. They put love and passion into the products, just like we do at Avon Wallace Distilling. We're gonna use Fair Isle. Farmer's Market blends. We got it at the Farmer's Market. Delicious, perfect, well roasted. Made in Longmont, Colorado. And our Luska Overproof Rum. Now, you can use bourbon or vodka. We like to use rum. You're gonna need a nice container to put this all in. Now, the nice thing about using the Overproof Rum is that we're going to make a double batch. So one bottle becomes two. This is 121 proof, 60.5% ABV. So if we add 50% more water and sugar, it'll be about 30% or 60 ABV. And that is gonna be a nice uh, warming coffee liqueur, but not too strong or not too weak. You want the ethanol to make the extraction. The water will just taste kind of groundy, earthy, dirty, where the ethanol is going to extract some of the essential oils uh, a little bit better. Heat will do the same thing in the morning when you make coffee, but if you do a long, cold press, it's gonna be nice to, to have some ethanol in there. Let's begin. That is a merry sound during the holidays. Okay, one bottle of Luska Overproof Rum. I've got about 600 milliliters of water. Then we're gonna add our coffee. Mmm, smells like heaven. Gonna need this in the morning. Just dump it right in there. Now, with the alcohol and a uh, two to three day extraction, you don't need to grind up the beans. Over time, the booze and the water will do the job. That'll make it easier to extract in the long run. All right, to sweeten it, you could add sugar. Uh, at the distillery, we invert sugar. So we cook it with citric acid and that turns sucrose into fructose and glucose. Crazy science stuff. But here we have agave sugar, uh, or agave nectar, and that is a lot of fructose. So it's just gonna have a different uh, chemical composition. Just the sugars are a little bit different. You could add honey or just put sugar in there. Uh, I think for sake of use, doing a little agave will be really nice. The great thing here is you try it as you go. So in a day or two, we'll shake it up, try it. If it's not sweet enough or it's, if it's not roasted enough, we will add some more sugar, wait a little bit longer, and, uh, and just give it time, keep tasting it, and it will be ready. One thing that goes really well with coffee are vanilla beans. Here we have some Madagascar vanilla beans. I definitely recommend putting some spices into your coffee. And what we like to do you can put these into the bottles once you're all done, but you can also blend it in right off the bat. It's 
it's good to cut those down. Vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world. Behind, you guess it, saffron. So, it's good to strip it down the middle and then take that. <sighs> and we're gonna scrape out those beans. Mm hmm There's that nice vanilla paste on the inside. Oh, yeah. Put the bean in there, but then you see all of that delicious paste, that's what you want. If you don't cut it open, you're not gonna get that nice extraction. Cut it open, exposes all that good extract and flavor. And that'll just mean you get more of that expensive spice right into your coffee. All right, all right. Water's boiling. Okay. Oh, my fingers smell so good. These elf costumes are a little warm. Whew. All right, last one. Uh, so it's good to put one to two bean pods uh, per bottle into the blend. We started with one bottle of overproof rum and then we added water and agave. So we're gonna get two bottles of coffee liqueur. So I ended up putting four bean pods in and that'll, that'll give it some nice sweet vanilla notes to it. Mm. All right. So just gonna let that sit for two to three days. Nice and cool, dark place. Uh, and taste it along the way. Make sure it's what you want. If you want it to be roastier, let it go along. If you want it sweeter, add more sugar. You wanna start low and always add more. You can't go backwards. So I recommend starting with a good quality roast like Fair Owl and uh, some, some light on the sugar. And that way you can always add more because you can't go backwards. And these are nice ingredients, so you don't wanna mess it up. Okay, so now that we have the coffee liqueur going, let's make rum cake. Caribbean black rum cake. Ah. They smell delicious. This is a favorite pastime of mine during the holidays because it involves a lot of delicious rums, like our Leviathan Black Spice Rum, some El Dorado 15, probably the best of the bunch, and this Leopold Brothers Cherry Liqueur. Now, there's a few things you have to get together to make this happen. Definitely start getting the fruit soaking in booze as soon as you can. It really needs to soak for two to three days or three to six months. So with that, we're gonna get going. Caribbean black cake. Black Caribbean cake? No. Caribbean black cake. This recipe is from 52food.com. So if I mess up some parts along the way, check out 52food.com and it'll have the complete description. Also, We'll have it up on avonwallace.com for you. All right, the most important thing is get that fruit soaking. We've got dates, a pound of dates. More dates. Mm. Mm. You ever wrap these things in bacon? Talk about a holiday treat, yeah. Delicious. Ooh, got a little cherries. The recipe doesn't call for cherries, but I like to party. Currants, pound of currants. Each bag is like eight ounces. Raisins.
Oh yeah. Some blueberries. You know what? The blueberries were also for fun, so we're gonna hold off on some of those because we gotta get the figs in. Figs, mas importante. All right. I got just the right size of container here. Woo! That is full. Okay, once you got all your fruit in there, you need two cups of cherry brandy. It's that time again. For black spice rum. All right, now that it's like 11 o'clock or something, it's time for some black spiced rum. Oh yeah. The recipe calls for a quart. One bottle is 25 ounces, 750 milliliters. So just dump the whole thing in there. We look a little short. I put a little extra fruit in there. Just put a splash more cherry liqueur in. And it also calls for some orange and lime zest. Gotta get my zester. All right, the citrus is gonna help this fruit pop. Oh, that's a nice peeler. Ooh. Okay, get those in there. Get some orange, why not? Remember, when you're peeling fruit, move the fruit, not your hand. You don't want to peel your thumb off. All right. Another lime. There we go. Okay, that's looking nice and colorful. I might do some lemon too. Why not just make it a trifecta This will really help brighten up the cake in the long run. All right, you got all that nice, dark, dried, pitted fruit, and then add it in here with the citrus zest and oils. That's just gonna make a nice, well-rounded flavor. All right, so you're gonna let that sit for as long as you can. Three, four months is great. Three or four days is okay too. Store it in a nice, cool, dark place in the pantry, in the liquor cabinet, or wherever. You can stir it up if you'd like. Just, it's good to have enough booze in there to cover up the fruit. I probably add a little extra fruit, but I just like a little variety, so you can stir it up. When you're building the fruit, it's, it's important to have enough booze in there to have a nice uh, liquefied blend. Harry Potter had that wand around here somewhere earlier. Here we go. Here we go. Might need to keep that for later. 
So after three or four months, you're gonna wanna blend that up and get a nice fruit paste. It's good to have some chunks in there. Oh, it smells so good. That's gonna make some delicious fruit cake. All right, time to fold that into some batter. All right, we're gonna start with blending one pound of dark brown sugar in one pound of butter. Whip that up in a stand mixer or by hand uh, until you get a nice fluffy uh, whip. Then we're gonna add 10 eggs individually, one at a time. Keep it going. All right, to the butter and brown sugar. Let's go. Okay, then we're gonna add some vanilla, some almond, and some Angostura bitters. These are just gonna help pop the vanilla, nutty, and spicy flavors of the cakes. Two cups of flour, then slowly fold in your fruit mixture. <sighs> Finally, you'll need to add a burnt caramel coloring agent. So we just burnt sugar, granulated sugar down, added some hot water, and this will help darken up the cakes. This is like caramel coloring, very common practice in making booze. We do not do it, but many companies do it to add color back to the product. I have one more secret ingredient, chocolate chips. This, the recipe doesn't call for this, but the first time I made it, I thought that some bittersweet chocolate would really round out the flavor. You know what, in the spirits of things, let's just add the whole bag. Why not? We're gonna fold it in there. And then, pour our little cakes into little cake pans. Got a nice sheet of bunk cakes. We're gonna set the oven 250 and bake for two hours. Put that thing in the oven. Man, man, that thing's been going for hours now. So those black rum cakes need to bake for one hour at 250 and then three hours at 225. It is a commitment, ladies and gentlemen, but it is well worth it. You wanna bake those real low and slow because you have a lot of fruit in there and there's a lot of caramel reactions going on. If you go too hot, you'll dry it and burn it and that is no good. Rum is not gonna save it. So take your time and you will be well paid. Well rewarded. All right, let's get those cakes out of the oven. Voila. Okay, once you get them out of the oven, definitely put them on a nice cooling rack. They're gonna start cooling down. But as they're still hot and cooling down, you wanna start soaking them in rum. Start bathing them, making them happy for everybody. So I chose an Eldorado 15 year old. It's a Demerara rum made in Guyana. And the thing with Demerara rum, from Guyana is that it is very sweet. It uses this rich dark brown sugar. And after 15 years, it is just so mellow and smooth and delicious. And we're gonna put it on these cakes because it's Christmas and why not do something nice? All right, so you're just gonna get a little sponge, put some paper down because you don't wanna make a total mess and just paint those bad boys. Let them soak it in. Oh yeah. You're gonna wanna do this two, three, four, however many times. I mean, you're really just painting booze on. So I don't feel like you could ever have too much, but maybe you could if you're just biting into a little rum cake. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's just smelling so nice over here. Like I'm right near the beach, boy. 
No, <laughs> wait, Ken, I'm from the North Pole. All right. Now you're going to want to let that soak in for five or 10 minutes and come back and hit it the next time. I love this thing. I think I need more coffee. Congratulations on the world's best coffee! We need some of the world's best coffee. It is. It is. You did it. You did it. Especially with that maple syrup. Okay. Let's do one more soak and we are out of here. Mmm, yes. They're looking nice and juicy now. Oh. You know, and these do not have to be perfect. They're all gonna taste amazing. And you don't have to soak them in booze. After cooking them for four hours, there are, is no more rum or booze left over. It's just flavor. So if you want to leave some naked, serve them to the kids, they will be totally fine. And then you can leave these special, I might drizzle some icing on there. If you, hey, these are for the kids. Icing, kids love icing. But then you'll drizzle some nice booze on there for the adults. Keep them separate and everyone will be happy. And with that, I'm a cotton-headed nitty muggin. See you next week. After all those sweets and treats and cakes, I just see a big hearty breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day. Why not have it at night? Spaghetti. That's what my mom told me how to make. I love some sprinkles. Oh, sprinkles are little hearts. They're so cute. M&Ms. Normally, I stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. But sometimes I like to mix it up a little bit. Ooh, ooh, Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Some chocolate syrup. Oh, yeah. And of course, maple syrup. forgot though if you don't finish it you should take it for lunch mm, my favorite spaghetti here you go